Make sure that you do a range check with your radio before you start to fly. We have had several times where due to the routing of wires or a broken antenna that uh, people would crash many times in a row thinking that something was wrong when they were just flying out of range of the radio because there was another problem. Low batteries might even be a problem, but in most cases uh, the problem was something they should have seen in a pre-flight check on the ground. The elevons are a mixing of the aileron control, which would be this kind of a control, and the elevator control, which is this kind of a control. So you've got up and down with the elevator, and opposite movement with, with ailerons, but when you have elevons, it now makes it so that you can get mixing of the two different surfaces, and they combine together in order to make your plane fly. The way they should set up is like this. When you pull back, they should both go up three-eighths of an inch, pulling straight back. Back to neutral, going forward, they should both go down three-eighths of an inch. Going to the right, the right elevon should move up three-eighths of an inch, the left one should move down three-eighths of an inch. And when you go to the left, left elevon should move up three-eighths of an inch, the right elevon should move down three-eighths of an inch. When you combine the two and go to a corner, it will move double the motion because it adds the elevon and the, the the aileron and the elevator function together and in the elevon it will double it uh, in order to give it the right proportions of flying in this air. Make sure you get your throws right. If you get too much throws it will stall your plane and it will snap roll. If you don't have enough you'll have a hard time controlling your plane. Make sure your planes are light. I have had several planes handed to me for flight checking and the planes were extremely heavy with center of gravity off and they are very difficult to fly if they will fly at all. Part of the reason that I've started going to the white appearance on the plane is just as a reminder to all the builders that heavy, light planes fly better than heavy planes. And you'll notice I'm putting very little trim on the planes. I'm using a little bit of the holographic tape that you can get from, from uh, Paper Street Plastics on eBay, but overall the plane is very light. And even with the laminate, the weight of the plane on mo in most cases for an assassin is around 16 ounces and on the Titan we're getting 23-24 ounces. Uh, please make sure the plane is light, make sure it's balanced, make sure that your control surfaces are moving the right amount, make sure that your rods won't flex. The, the flexing rods is a major problem, make sure your servos don't move, make sure that all your radio is well secured in your plane and you'll have a wonderful time flying. Just for an added note, here's an HS-82 Metal Gear Servo. It's what I use on all my combat planes. Here's my Spectrum 6100E receiver. And I've actually put it in the trench. One of the antennas is right here, laying across the servo. The other is down in the bottom underneath there. Works just fine. I've never flown that out of range with that down, and it sure protects it rather than having it laid flat. The 6100E also has the plugs on the end which makes it so that it's easier to fit in a wing. And here's a 30 amp speed control and another HS82 servo. You'll notice that the plugs that hold the motor on are 3 pin plugs. They were 4 pin, I cut one off. But what that does is it allows me to trade motors and speed controls very quickly if I'm at the flying field and something's gone wrong. The other thing is, is if I want to reverse the motor direction, I turn the plug over and by plugging it in, it now becomes a, uh, turns the motor the opposite direction for forward flight rather than reverse, uh, push or prop.